Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Nintendo Fanboys. Steven and I have a glorious show for you today that I put together in 10 seconds, and it's probably going to be the worst, uh, the worst thing ever. No, I'm kidding. It's actually going to be really, really good. But I know we're doing a Nintendo Fanboys, so we actually have some really interesting stuff. No BS, we have some really interesting stuff to cover. But I actually wanted to talk about something that was just announced last night at the time of this recording. So basically a day ago for you guys. And it's, um, or two days ago, it, it was, um, it's weird, okay? So it has nothing to do with Nintendo but it's got to do with the NES slash SNES era. I don't know if you heard about this, Steven, but Konami officially revealed the TurboGrafx-16 Mini slash PC Engine Mini and the fact that it will contain 50 games. Uh, I thought that was already announced. It's just they, they announced previously the device, but they didn't announce like price. They didn't announce how many games. They didn't announce like any of that stuff. That okay. was all announced uh, last night. So it's going to be around a hundred bucks somewhere. Um, we don't know how many controllers and stuff like that yet, but it sure seems like it's going to just contain like the single controller uh, and fifty games. Now, what I wanted your opinion on is this because really, and it does have to do with Nintendo in the sense that. The minis all started with the NES Mini. The SNES Mini, like, actually outsold, or the NES Mini, I forget which one it was, outsold all other modern-day platforms for, like, the month of June last year, which is pretty pretty impressive. And um, so, like, Nintendo's the ones that really, like, launched this thing. And it's been... It's been quite successful, right? Like, we've got other people that are trying to follow. PlayStation really butchered their PlayStation Mini or PlayStation Classic or whatever the hell it was called. Uh, looks They're like They're all Sega. called Classic, by the way. You are keep they? saying Mini. I don't know why. I know that perhaps in Japan they're called the Famicom Mini, but it's the SNES and the NES okay. Classic. Okay, cool. Uh, I know that the Turbo Graphics is the Mini because I have it in front of me. Um, so it's not just me, damn you. <laughs> but the NES and SNES Classic, let's just say that, uh, for me, those are, like, incredible machines. I really do. I think they're 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 pretty awesome. Uh, Sega's, like, Genesis Classic, Genesis Mini, Genesis Omega Ultra Deluxe uh, looks to be... If the emulation is there, it looks to be like it could be, like, a really fantastic thing. And now you got this Turbo Graphics, And like I said, Sony's really sucked. Uh, but... The thing that I wanted to mention was I've never seen a company do what they did here, okay? And I think it's a combination of laziness and kind of unique at the same time. But I really want your opinion of this. Okay, so listen to this, man. So it's got 50 games, and the games are the same regardless of region, okay? So it doesn't matter. The only difference that you're going to actually see is that of the... Um, like the shell that's that's the only thing that's going to be different everything else is going to be 100 percent the same and here we go for games i'm not going to list them all or anything but there are 24 turbo graphics 16 games in english and 26 pc engine games that are in japanese there you go that is very unique i find I, I've never, like, that's really messed up. And these games are 100% untouched. So, for example, the TurboGrafx-16 will have, like, you know, your usual bonk games and stuff like that. But one of the PC Engine games is Snatcher, which is a digital graphic novel. But it's only available in Japanese. <laughs> so, I... Uh, I don't quite understand <laughs> what they're they're going for here. Like, this is the laziness part. I'm like, what? And then when you start to look at the list, you're like, oh, look, Newtopia 1 and 2 in English. Yee's Book 1 and 2 in English. Awesome. But then you look in the Japanese list of those 26 games, and you're like, Yee's Book 1 and 2. Newtopia Book 1. Well, not book, but Newtopia yeah. 1 and 2. So I just, I don't know. I've never seen anything like so that. So basically I, they count those games twice? Yes, the 50 exactly. Games? 
Yeah, but to, I gotta be. I gotta be fair. If we are to consider this as units, so like a disc or a um, uh, not a cartridge, but what they called hue card. If we were to look at it solely like that, not games, there are fifty individual. Let's say discs, okay? Even though our hue cards, let's let's just say hue cards for for the sake of argument. But it does include disc-based games. There are fifty hue card games in there, okay? Of those 50 games, five of them are duplicates. So that's not terrible. It means that 45 games are completely original. Okay. So it's not it's not like god awful, but it's still my point with this is why in the hell would you release full text based Japanese like RPGs and stuff like that in the North American version? I don't get that. Well, it seems like. They took the shortest route available to them and just basically released everything as they were so they don't have to do any work and they can make some money off this without pretty much any con consequences because the only people who are going to buy this are hardcore gamers like you because nobody knows these consoles so there's no nostalgic value like the NES and SNES Classic so Konami figures that no matter what they do they won't sell more or less so why not just go the easy route that's probably why they did this and for a consumer like me or somebody who was maybe a bit, a bit curious about this system doesn't really make any sense to buy it and play snatcher which everybody says is awesome when you know you won't be able to because it's in japanese now it probably will be hackable and stuff and people will add easily available patches to those so maybe it'll be worth it for those but like i said i think there's a specific market for this console and that market was gonna buy this no matter what well very good i actually really like that that's a logical statement i think that's the first time you've ever done that <laughs> thank you <laughs> you're welcome you're welcome and the oscar goes to steven <laughs> All right, so let's switch gears. I just thought that was really unique that, like, uh, I'd never seen a company do that before. So we're going to switch gears, and there was tremendously huge, gargantuan non-news that uh, happened a couple of days ago. And I say it's non-news because, for the most part, most people really don't care. Uh, but it's a video that I'm working on that I do care about, and that is... It's a video on Dragon Quest IX. Dragon Quest IX actually just a few days ago turned 10 years old. And what does this have anything to do with Nintendo? Well, everything, because the Dragon Quest IX was one of the highest selling games on the DS. It is the highest selling Dragon Quest game uh, ever. And when I should Let me rephrase that. Uh, Dragon Quest IX was one of the highest selling third party games on the DS, and it is the highest selling Dragon Quest game in history. And it actually has a very interesting place in history and will always have a very interesting place in history as being the precursor to Street Pass. Uh, if, if you don't know this, Iwata and, and others worked with Square Enix to create essentially the technology that would become Street Pass and it all started with Dragon Quest IX. And so I thought it would be a really interesting idea to do like a 10 year anniversary video for Dragon Quest 9 because for me my story with Dragon Quest 9 I think anyway is kind of an interesting one where I was I found it quite a divisive game I was not really into it whatsoever when it was first announced uh, back in those days we still had message boards and stuff and I was quite vocal saying that I didn't like the downgrade from Dragon Quest 8 to to like the DS you know like to go from these beautiful lush 3d environments to what would have been more rudimentary uh, 3d environments I, I was like I don't I don't understand the logic of this um, and I'm not gonna talk all about the video I'm making but the game grew on me significantly, but it remains, Dragon Quest IX remains the only Dragon Quest game, I think, in history that I did not fully experience the way it was supposed to experience. And I mention you quite a lot, Monsieur, in the video, because I talk about the fact that uh, if you had lived here, I think uh, Dragon Quest IX would both be our favorite Dragon Quest game because we would have played the living crap out of that in multiplayer 
and I think it would have had like a profound impact, but because I played the Japanese version a year before, and interestingly enough, it's one of my very first video reviews I ever did, and... Anyways, I, I talk all about that. I don't want to go and like spend uh, 40 minutes here on that. But I just thought you'd get a kick out of that. And um, since you're not in the video, what were your thoughts on Dragon Quest IX? Yeah, I played Dragon Quest IX maybe a year or two after it came out. Uh, probably more than that because I played it on the, on the 3DS. Uh, I agree though with your statement. I believe that if I played it with you, it probably would be my favorite Dragon Quest. So still one of my projects one of these days to actually play go through the game with you because it is possible forever right because it's not yep. has not anything to do with online uh, no, so one exactly. of these days we'll have to get together for a week play that game honestly i i'm playing it right now this was uh, part of the video like a uh, little bit of the surprise that i'm ruining for you I uh, I found a a fantastic uh, emulator plus a save editor uh, because that was the thing that really annoyed me. I have all the DLC, but I have it only in the Japanese version. So my North American version, I never, I never really, like, well, quote unquote, mastered or destroyed like I typically do with the Japanese, uh, like the Japanese games. And so I was like, ah, oh, man, like, that sucks. Like, I was just in the mood. And this is what sort of has eaten all my time. And it's, I, I just got, like, totally obsessed with this uh, over the last, like, week. And that's why I haven't been uh, even looking at any other games such as your Mario Maker. Because I, I thought this was the coolest thing ever. So I know I'm probably, like, 10 years late to the party here. But this save editor is so easy to use, man. It's basically like a, a, a little like USB key. You put, plug in your uh, DS cart. It takes your save file off of, the, off of the, the, the cart. And then you can edit the save file. And yes, you can do cheating things if you want, like change your level and all that kind of crap. But what's really cool is that the DLC in Dragon Quest IX is not actually DLC. Every single piece of DLC is on the cart to begin with. It was simply locked. And so they did this as a means of uh, using that essentially street pass feature and also as a means of really pushing the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection in Japan. But all of that content is actually on the cart. So with a save editor, what you can do is you can actually go in and flag it and say like, oh, no, 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 I did meet 30 guests. And then that levels up your hotel. And you can say like, oh, no, 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 I, I did get all of those other quests. Not, not complete, mind you, but just like I, I received the quest. And if as long as you've received the quest that saves to your your cart and then you're good to go so i've been having an absolute blast with this stuff because yeah, it's the first is, time this is interesting because i've heard about this because this is basically how most people cheat in pokemon and get any pokemon they want but it's also a good way of getting the pokemon heart gold and soul silver exclusive nintendo wi-fi events well, there you go. This is exactly like this. Yeah, it's exactly. Uh, they were locked in. I, I believe they were locked in the cart, and you had to be or do something specific at that time, which I never did. So I never did experience those events in Soul Silver. But yeah, that's pretty cool that you're doing this. I, I've heard about that, but even though this is extremely simple, it's it's probably super complicated for a guy like me who has trouble using a calculator. But no, but seriously, dude, no, I, I'll be honest, I was very nervous uh, at first, like, I was like, well, I don't want to screw up, uh, like, my game, right? Uh, but I made a copy, and I followed a two-minute tutorial, and it really is a joke. Like, seriously, it's a joke on how to do this, and man, I'm, I'm having a blast, like, I'm having an absolute blast. So for that video that I'm, I'm putting together, actually, right now... I um, I just captured a bunch of footage, and I really like it, man. So um, I'll tell you this right now. I've I've now gotten um, to a point where if you ever want to do any DS reviews 
ever again. Like, if you ever want to do any retro stuff, you just let me know. And what I've done is I've put the windows horizontally. So you have one on the left, one on the right. Yeah. So it, it makes up most of the screen. It's so still you can actually play your DS games on your computer or capture footage through that? It, it's it's all through emulation, but the emulation, man, is like it's it's practically one-to-one. -one. Like it's flawless, man. And you like can't do that no for 3DS yet? I can, yes, I can. I, I've been experimenting because here's another surprise video. So everyone who's listening, you're, you're getting some insider scoop here. I'm actually going to do something that I wanted to do for a very, very, very long time, which is I'm going to put together my top 11 Dragon Quest games of all time, which essentially means I'm going to like put the main numbered series in the order that I enjoy them the most. But to do that, I wanted to capture footage of what I consider to be the best versions of each one of those games. So I don't know if you saw, like today, I had a, a little like, just a, a, a little, like almost like a walkthrough of the beginning of Dragon Quest three on the Super Famicom. And I did that on purpose because I'm slowly capturing footage of each one of the games in the version that I like the most. And um, there's a, a 3DS emulator. And I know, I know that, you know, we're going to get people like, why are you using emulation and this and that and everything else? But the reality is, how else am I going to capture Dragon Quest VIII footage or Dragon Quest VII footage of the version that I think people should play right now based on um, ease. And so I'm going to do like a top 10 and I'm going to say why the game's like, you know, like why I think this is like the best entry at this particular point. Like say like, no, number five and, and say the game. But I'm also going to say why I think that version is um, is the version that you know you should try and check out and play and stuff and sometimes it's going to be as simple as ease of access it's just easier to play it's like dragon uh, quest 7 of course i'm going to recommend the 3ds version because good luck finding the playstation 1 version and it's also it's just not as accessible as a game so i don't know if you're interested in that or not but i think that's going to be one hell of a long video and i really want to do it justice so I'm experimenting right now with the 3DS emulator, and I'll be honest, man, it's working uh, very well. Like, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, Because so eventually I would love to do... You'll have to teach me all that stuff eventually because there are so many 3DS videos I have in my head because it is one of my favorite systems, and I want to do top 10s. Of multiple well, kinds. And I'll let you know, man. I Seriously? need footage, but yeah. because I'm like... I'm recording something right now on my 3DS and off-screen footage that I'm recording is e is worse than when I did record off-screen footage five years ago. So I have no idea what I'm doing wrong anymore. But yeah, that, that would be awesome. So yeah, I'll keep you posted on that. Um, so there you go. Look, 20 minutes in and we haven't even spoken about uh, anything uh, super duper. But I'm, I'm just, th this is why I've been sort of like gone is because I've been uh, focusing so much on getting these emulators to work and to get them to a place that I really like. But then you have the legal gray zone, right, of the ROMs themselves and that that opens up a whole other can of worms because it's like many sites like Nintendo, for example, have been have been really going at these sites to pull down all of their games and stuff. And, and I understand that when you have like the SNES classic and stuff like that out. But still, it's like if I'm trying to capture footage of certain things, I I mean, I have no other means, you know, and if anyone ever accused me of not supporting a series like Dragon Quest, well, they're on drugs. Because I've spent more money on that series, I think, than any other series in the history of gaming. But whatever. <laughs> okay, so a little bit of news before we jump into our uh, giant uh, subjects. And we have two big subjects. One of which Steven's going to talk about and the other one we're both going to sort of split up. But uh, there is another review I want to do. And that is for The Messenger, because I think that's going to be one of Steven's favorite reviews when I'm uh, when I put it together. I've already started work on the script a little bit, and I just it needs a little more massaging. Um, so once I'm done with this Dragon Quest sort of like emulator thing, I'm going to jump ship to Messenger because the Messenger DLC, which is called Picnic Panic, is out. So I don't know if you had yeah, a chance to download it. That would be it. perfect timing. No, right now... To be honest, like I've only been playing one game for like the past two weeks, and I have, mm, I really want to try this, but right now nothing will 
take me away from Mario Maker. There's just nothing. But yeah, the, the Messenger review would be perfect timing because of this new DLC. Have you tried it? No, not yet. No? That, that's why I'm saying. Um, like, I want to, I want to, I want to like do it sort of together because it's it's free DLC. So what I was thinking of doing was doing like a. Or you think it would be better if I separate them? Ah, no clue. It's yeah. up to you. But I know that the the DLC you have to beat the game to access yeah. it. Well, that, that's okay. So well, then, okay, perfect. Yeah. That's even better. So I can do a com combined thing because it's free DLC. So I just thought it was really, uh, really cool. And I, I, I really like the messenger. I really do. Uh, I've been like teasing Steven for months now. Um, it's just, I don't think it's the, the, the Holy Grail, but I do think it's a superb game. And, um, and I think you'll really enjoy the review. That's all I'm going to say. I think you'll really, really enjoy this. So with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about Mario Maker 2 because I know you're going crazy. You've been sending me videos on it and I watch it and I just have a I just laugh to myself because I'm like I don't even know what's happening. <laughs> like it's it's crazy. So go ahead, talk up Mario Maker 2. Yeah, I I don't know where to start. I I'm already 50 hours into the game. I I I basically play the game every second I have a chance to. I go to bed way too late. Uh, last week, I have two friends here in town that are also playing this game. And one of them last week created a level. And it's one of those underwater levels with tons of spikes. So you need to be basically pixel perfect to navigate. And every time they create a level, I have to beat it. I have to beat it. And this one took me four straight hours of playing and doing nothing but <laughs> playing that level and finally I managed to beat it and I, I I'm serious I did nothing else like I had to go pee for like two hours and I s didn't go until I finished it I was obsessed with that damn level and I finally finished it and like I think yesterday someone else beat it and broke my world record damn it but I'm not playing touching that level ever again but it's so amazing and I've also made I think I made five levels so far two of which I don't think you could make the first jump and the other three you could actually beat them if you one of them might take you a few like a 15 20 tries but it would be doable there I, I like to create levels that I would enjoy playing but I also like to create levels that m anyone can enjoy playing so there's some that I make that are for like my my uh, my oldest can actually beat that one so it's it's just for fun but there are there are also levels I I'm really into slowly but surely getting better at kaizo techniques i don't know if you know what kaizo is but it's basically no uh these super expert mario players have been making these rom hacks for years and you should see the, the the games they make of super mario world these are basically guys who can beat super mario world blindfolded and they do it on screen and they try to beat records i have no idea how you can beat super mario world blindfolded but they do and basically they create jumps and techniques some techniques you have to be like the millisecond correct like you have some sometimes they jumped on on places where like a, a game like super mario world doesn't even have wall jumps but they figure out a way to actually do a wall jump if you time it correctly it's crazy but basically they're do the technique i like the most doing is shell jumps which is it allows you to reach uh, a point that you wouldn't be by jumping, throwing the shell, and bouncing off it, which is a technique that Nintendo has never. Uh, it, it, it's in Super Mario World. It's in it's in that game, but you've never had to do it to beat the game. But it's amazing and it's really hard. And at first, like I could, I would pull it off like two out of ten times. Now I'm pretty much like six, six point five out of ten. I pull it off. So it's It's I guess you get better with practice, and I'm really enjoying that. So I'm basically creating what i like to call kaizo levels for beginners because like like the levels i'm showing you uh, i i could never do like uh, even with the patience there's some you need to basically have perfect like uh, button presses and stuff like that that i don't think i will ever have the skill to do because the levels he uploads like they get beaten by like by 15 20 people that's it <laughs> so it's pretty crazy and, and they get like a uh, hundred thousand plays and stuff like that pretty pretty cool stuff and the, the single player mode took me 10 hours to beat and it's probably one of the best 2d marios i've ever played it's, it's just fantastic there are levels in there that are harder than 
anything Nintendo has ever put into a Mario, a 2D Mario game. So it's, I'm surprised actually because some elements they use, we thought they would actually patch out a Mario Maker, but they didn't patch it out. They even put it in the story mode. So it's pretty cool. Uh, two days ago, I went to a friend's place and we played basically for two hours. We played Mario Versus. So you can play with up to four players. Uh, the problem right now is it, it's random. You can't play with your friends. But if you go to the same place and you play local, so you all join the same group, then you can play uh, online levels with them. And it's just a different beast. I never thought, I never really enjoyed Mario Co-op so much. But Mario Versus is such a, a joy to play because it creates an atmosphere one of the most stressful atmosphere I've ever had because it's basically the first guy who beats the level wins but if if you're behind you have to play like a crazy person you can't play like Jared and be very careful and wait for the Goomba to pass because if you do you're not gonna arrive first you have to take risk and risk create chaos and it's just crazy what happens and you basically laugh all the way and then you swear at each other and you want to kick the table you want to break your switch in half it's just it 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 you have to try this one day it's just incredible it's a lot of fun but the big but is right now and i hope it's just right now like i played a few times here the online is absolute crap i don't know what year nintendo thinks this is they're making us pay for this now even though it's not much the online sucks and when we played we, since we were all together in one connection and we had no other strangers <laughs> like it was it wasn't so bad it was next to lo no lag but if you play with random people it's like it's almost terror almost unplayable most of the times because you can't have lag in the mario game it's just impossible you're gonna die because you're gonna tr you're gonna jump and the, the jump button press will not sometimes the action will freeze for like three seconds so it's just unplayable i don't i hope they fix this eventually i don't have much hope uh but i did not buy mario maker 2 expecting to play much multiplayer so it's a bonus feature i really enjoy this but i it could become something i play a lot more if it would be fixed because i don't think i will have the chance to do what we did every week and go to a friend's house and play this but yeah basically Mario Maker 2 is everything I wanted it to be. I'm uh, really enjoying it a lot so far. I can't wait to, for you to actually try some of those levels. And uh, hopefully do at least one episode on these. Because I remember that, that series was a, was a huge hit back then. And it's such a fun game that I think will be even better than the original. Because this is a system that actually people have. So the community is already so much bigger than it was when mario maker one launch and there's so there's already two mi two million levels out there and people are playing it and as long as people are playing it will keep growing and i expect nintendo to release updates for this because they did that on the wii u they released multiple updates for the game so hopefully they do this uh, with this one and so far i've been really having a blast with it well, that's awesome, man, and you should certainly review that seriously because I know that people are going to want to uh, want to hear your opinion of that in in greater detail. And also, by the way, everyone, tell Stephen uh, happy birthday because it's his birthday as of this recording. It's uh, well, not the recording, but as of when you see it, it's a couple of days uh, ago. So tell him happy birthday. He's now ninety-seven. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, what are your plans for uh, the big day, which is right now, <laughs> besides uh, spending it with some loser on a podcast? Yeah, yeah well, when, I, when I'm done this, I'm actually going to go unbox a nice little present you gave me, which I haven't done yet. So, we'll see what what wonderful stuff you've, you've bought for me this year. My notes this year were kind of lame. I apologize. Well, I, they, uh, they usually are. Yeah, but they're even lamer than normal. So uh, you'll you'll see if if you get any of them wrong, I'll be shocked. Well, last <laughs> year that's... you bought me SNK 40th Anniversary Collection, thinking it was NXT NXT. It was SNK Tag Team, the girl fighting game. You thought it was a girl fighting game, but you yeah, bought right. me the 40th, and you gave me a clue for the tag fighting game. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. 
you saying that there will be obvious means nothing to me because well, for all I know you could have <laughs> bought me a game and give me a clue for another game because you forgot which game you yeah. bought me already because yeah. knowing yeah, you yeah. you went to the list or and just picked the first two you saw no 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 it was like the first six or something <laughs> but whatever you'll see yeah. uh, you'll see all right I want you to tell us a little actually you know what no we'll save that for after um, let's talk about the switch light. So, I'm sure by now, all of you Nintendo fans have heard about this. Uh, it's basically going to be a dedicated, portable version of the Switch. And it ships on September 20th, 2019, which is the exact same date as The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Uh, is, is it, what's the name of that game? Is, did they just call it that, or is it, like, did they add anything to it? Yeah, I believe they just called it that, because the Game Boy Color version was called Deluxe, or... So I think that's why they did not go for the okay. locks, but okay. I could be wrong. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, so anyways, whatever. The price point in American, anyway, it's 200 US dollars, which is $100 uh, less than the Switch. And I think in Canada, it's like 260 or something like that. I think. You're I don't have it right. open in front yeah, of me. But it's some, it, basically, it's $100 cheaper than, than the Switch. Um, now, I don't know why people are confused about this. But I said it, I thought, pretty clearly. It, it is a dedicated, portable version of the Switch. Meaning, it doesn't connect to the TV, okay? It doesn't have removable Joy-Cons. I've seen so many comments online from people saying, Oh, well, it's not a Switch. It's not this. It's not that. And, like, I, I don't understand people. I, I, I don't get it. It's, I thought this was very obvious if you watch the video <laughs> that uh, Nintendo released. It seems very clear to me. It is a portable-only version of the Switch. That's yep. it. Like, where's the, where's the confusion it here, does, guys? It does, however, make... It does. I do agree, though, that the name doesn't make sense anymore <laughs> with, for that <laughs> per particular unit. But it's, it would have been a... PR disaster to change yeah. the name just for that. It would have made no yeah. sense to change the no. name of the Switch Lite. You already have like an IP, a franchise, a, a brand that is very popular. So of course you're gonna keep the Switch name even though it can't switch. But still, like when I when you I, I heard this from you and then I went it out and I got excited. This is what I want from. Uh, the portable side of switch like i don't need removable joy cons i don't need the rumble mm -hmm. i need a better battery life and that's what this apparently does although it doesn't seem to be nine it doesn't seem to be that huge of an improvement they say four to seven hours right which usually means yeah. two and a half to five usually they pump up like basically you, you would need to play like on v with the volume and the, the, the light setting on the lowest to get seven hours that's what it, this usually means when they say stuff like that but it's still an improvement i'm really like for me this is an incredible value it's basically uh, the same price as a new 3ds almost because a new 3ds xl even though you can't find one anymore as last time i checked because i did buy a lot of them <laughs> They were two twenty nine Canadian, so for like thirty bu thirty more dollars, you get a, a switch. So this is pretty cool for me. Yeah, I, I I thought it was very very uh, good. Offers a lot for your buck, and anybody who might not have a switch yet or has a PS four, an Xbox One, and was interesting in the switch, if you if you don't mind not having the option to connect it to your TV, like this is a pretty good deal in my opinion. And that Pokemon one, like, it's going to be hard for me to resist it. So hopefully I do because I don't need this. But <laughs> knowing me, I might oh, get it. Love it. Well, for me, uh, there's one other thing that you didn't mention and I didn't mention because I, I thought you might mention it. Uh, but I just want to touch uh, base or point or whatever on the battery. I can't remember where I was just looking on my phone right now. I don't remember where the hell I read this, but uh, I had read that they said you could expect about an hour of real-time use more than the current model. Okay. Like in real-world settings, they were like it would be somewhere around there. And I'm like, okay, um, all right. I mean, it still has the... It looks, it looks like the exact same 
input, meaning that my my um, my AC adapter that I have, I should be able to just, in theory, plug it directly in there and be good to go. I hope. I hope that's the case. I hope it doesn't have a, a separate uh, AC adapter. But the thing that I wanted to talk about that I'm really excited about this more than anything is the D-pad, man. We have a real Nintendo D-pad on the actual Joy-Con, which isn't the Joy-Con, but whatever. Like, I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. Because that was that's the thing that I found. I I played through uh, Time Spinner. By the way, Stephen, you should check that out. Eh, that's a really good game. Yeah, yeah, I saw. And but I I've been playing all those games. I played that one. Um, I'm still playing through actually. Uh, what's called a uh, Hollow Knight. Man, I'm getting my butt handed to me. You were right. Holy crap. Um, but I I keep noticing that I gravitate uh, like just by default, like not even thinking about it, I find my hands are on the um, the directional buttons. Yeah. And so I think this would really, like really excite me. And I'll be honest with you, I would buy this, I would pre-order this if Nintendo does one thing. If they just do one thing, I will pre-order this. And that one thing they have to do is I want to be able to switch back and forth with online cloud saves. Can I do that? Yep. That's the only thing yep. I want. Like, it, it has to be easy for me to do that. Yeah, because I, I'll, I'll pre -order. I... I'll pre-order. I want that like you because I'm a huge sucker for, like, personal stuff. Like, I like to check uh, how many times you've played a game and stuff like that. I wish instead they would limp remove the limit the ridiculous limit of 20 games and put just a whole library because we don't have trophies we don't have achievements but we have this and it's fun to see what we've been playing i like to see your collection of games and how many hours you've put into them and blah 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 it's stupid but lol, i like that so if i go and i play on my switch and then i play on my switch light i want that to keep track of it and i want it to basically switch left and right without any problem so maybe that's where the switch name comes from maybe the switch light will switch after all but yeah they need to do that as for the d-pad that's pretty cool uh the joy con thing like i i understand perfectly where there's no d-pad d-pad on a joy con because it has to be able to be played by itself so the the directional buttons have to be uh, buttons if you're playing with one joy con but i do have a uh, the hurry d-pad joy con so that's something i can use but strangely enough i now play 2d platformers with the joystick now and really yeah i find that the messenger mario maker uh, uh, i find that 2d platformers now control super well with that i don't know why I, I i never used to in the xbox 360 gen i can't do that with fighters though fighting games i need the d-pad i can't do that with the joystick though no that that's i can't but Honestly, have you tried the joy the the joystick though with two D platformers? Because I was like you before, uh, and I started playing it with Celeste. When Celeste came out, I noticed that my thumb wouldn't hurt as much if I used the joystick. And since uh, Celeste used like uh, eight way directional, like whatever, when you jump, you use your second like it's not really a, a double jump. It's more like a. a Anyway, I don't know how to explain it, but I, I found that it worked better with the joy joystick. And everybody that plays Mario Maker 2, the pros, everybody, they all play with a D-pad. So I think the D-pad probably offers the most uh, the most precise con way of controlling. But I think that the joystick is a much better alternative than it was like 10 years ago because of how these joysticks are created now. And also, my thumb hurts way less with that thing than the D-pad. No, that's cool, man. I mean, to each his own, right? Like, and the reality is, like, I have been using the directional buttons not not on purpose. Like, I usually always start with the stick, and the next time, like, I think about it or whatever, I look at my hands and they're on the directional buttons. I just, I don't know. I have no idea why that is. It's not even. It's not because like one, like I find the the stick doesn't control well or anything like that. I just, it's like I've, I'm not even thinking about it, and boom, it happens. But the reality is like I am using those directional buttons, and I'm able to play just fine. You know, like I'm not thinking. I'm not like, oh damn, I, like it's not working or anything like that. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of weird, but. 
I'm I'm happy. I'm I'm really happy that this uh, this system was announced the way it is. And you know what? Like you just said, I actually think that could be an interesting marketing um, sort of not ploy but campaign because the Switch Lite could still technically switch through digital uh, like distribution models and stuff. In other words, going from one like your your docked system to to this one and vice versa and stuff like that but we'll see i i will see because i already have another switch on its way so yeah like i gotta see because like a week before this is released i get the dragon quest switch so yeah what the hell am i gonna do with all these switches <laughs> oh, you'll figure ridiculous. out something you'll figure out something yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> uh, so anyways, and then the, the last like sort of news thing that we had was uh, about the National Pokedex. And this was something that has turned into a big thing, and I, I was totally lost till I spoke with you. Well, not totally lost, but I wanted to make sure my assumptions were actually correct. So go ahead and talk a little bit about what this is all about. Yeah, and I, I like the word uh, my brother-in-law texted me the other day and asked me what I thought about Dexit. And <laughs> that was the first time I heard that word, and as soon as he said it, I knew what he was talking about, but it was funny that people are now making a play out of Brexit, I imagine, <laughs> and calling this Dexit, which is the Pokemon Sword and Shield controversy. People are extremely mad about this. Like, there are videos. It's... Like, I know this won't happen because it would make no financial sense, but it's to the point, this controversy, where I almost wouldn't be shocked if they would delay the game to add this in, but I, it's not going to happen, I'm just saying. And what's basically what people are uh, angry about is the fact that the national decks won't be in... Uh, well, not the national decks, but the all, not all Pokemon will be in uh, Pokemon Sword and Chill, so only Pokemon that are in the Gala region Pokedex will be available to import. So you will be able to transfer your Pokemon from Pokemon Bank to Pokemon Home, which will be the uh, new smartphone app that basically will act like a Pokebank, but will be obviously will work with Pokemon Let's Go and every upcoming game after that. But not every one of your Pokemon will be compatible with Pokemon Sword and Shield. And we've learned that over E3. And we've briefly discussed this, I believe, in the last podcast. And I said that I this I didn't mind this because I always found it weird why people would keep coming back to their favorite Pokemon. Like for me, I want to play a new Pokemon game with new Pokemon. And that's always been something I've done. I've always wanted to experience the game with brand new Pokemon. But this is the first time ever that we won't be able to import our Pokemon back into a game. Because even with black and white, even though the game featured only 150 original Pokemon, after you beat the game, you could uh, transfer your Pokemon to that game however you liked. So this is something that people are very, very angry about. And I'm starting to see why. Because... I always said that I wanted the game this year and I, I bought their reasoning. Their reasoning was that to render all 850 or 900 Pokemon into this new 3D en engine, engine, whatever, it would take a lot of work and to be able to release the game on November 15th, it would basically be impossible. That's what they're reasoning and that's what I believed at the time. I'm starting to believe them a bit less because... There's been a few videos on YouTube of people kind of exposing Game Freak and proving that they're basically reusing a lot of animations from Pokemon Sun and Moon into this game. So it seems like they, they have not put as much work into this game as they say they did. And they're also claiming in interviews that Pokemon Sword and Shield is not their priority right now they're basically prioritize another game which i believe is town the other game they announced a few at the direct in february i believe which is another rpg they're making at game freak i believe pokemon is not their priority right now which is weird but that's what they said so like i i, I always said to people that 
don't worry about the national dex thing whatever you want to call it it will be in next year's version which will be pokemon ultra sword or ultra shield or sword and shield 2 or pokemon bow and axe whatever they call it but now that i'm thinking about it that's what i think they're doing i don't think they are not putting the full decks into this because they don't have time i think they want the full decks to be a selling feature for the next the sequel or the third version whatever you call it and if that is the case then they are in trouble because stuff like this is something that will piss off fans and eventually can claim to franchise like going down the pipe so we'll see i'm not sure if who to believe anymore i'm still like this is a game that once it come, comes out it will be a mario maker situation where i'll play this and i will be happy and no matter what happens but i do understand more why the controversy exists now than i did before because to me this wasn't a big deal but then again if dito is not in sword and shield and it will severely affect how i breed and play this game so i can see how some people might will be sad to see their favorite pokemon not available into sword and shield you know i actually um i actually watched a video the other day uh, how like talking about how pokemon sword and shield uh wasn't game freaks like priority they mentioned that that same thing that what, what did you call it town home what was it yeah i think they, they announced a game tentatively called town in the okay. last i don't know if that's the game they're working on that is priority but I, I i would assume it is but yeah so they they mentioned that and then they also mentioned th this is the video right whether or not this commentator had uh, had is it correct or not i have no idea but they were saying how um that mobile game pokemon uh masters, the one with yeah yeah masters is like actually taking a higher priority than uh, sword and shield and the guy went into like great detail talking all about uh like like different quotes that uh, some of the the commentators had made then like was comparing it to pokemon go looking at different revenue streams and, and just going on and on and on about this whole thing i mean some people would watch that as like a giant conspiracy theory but i actually was like wow this is like he had some very compelling arguments about like the future of the series and he he's basically believing that while he's a hardcore pokemon fan he's like he's he's basically trying to say that the future of the series is where the money is at and that if if this other like project that they're working on um actually you know makes like pokemon go levels of dough but this time for the pokemon company directly that they're like you know you could start to see this sort of stuff and i just thought i just thought it was an interesting whether or not i believe that that's a whole other story uh but i just thought it was interesting when you're dealing with a property right that doesn't really belong to you 100 percent. and pokemon is such an interesting beast and i know we've talked about this uh quite a bit like over the years about the pokemon company and and the 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 way it's split right between these different organizations and i just thought it was really really interesting because like pokemon is like the most successful property that is essentially exclusive to to nintendo and it's going to be interesting to see like what happens as we as we move forward i think you're going to be very pleased though i i my feeling my feeling is that you're going to be very very pleased with sword and shield even if even if there's no, you know, like you don't have the ability to pull every single uh, Pokemon into the game, I'm pretty sure that Ditto is going to be there because they know that that's pretty much how everyone breeds. So I, I'm pretty sure. I, I mean, have you I've seen the latest trailer? I have not. No, I have they not. They released it this week, I believe, on Monday. And, and uh, I don't know. It's like, do you remember Dynamax? Yeah, I was really like this. I was like, man, Dynamax is cool. Like uh, having the ability to use Dynamax in s certain locations, but not now. They've released, they've revealed Gigantamax, <laughs> and I was like, oh, come on! Dyn what the hell is Gigantamax? Gigantamax is basically Dynamax, but the Pokemon are slightly bigger <laughs> and might have a different form. 
and only a few Pokemon can do that. So it's basically like Mega Evolution, but not Mega Evolution. So I, I don't know. I, I'm still like, don't get me wrong, still super excited. But I, I, I was into Dynamax, but now I'm like, why does Gigantamax need to exist when we have Dynamax? It's like you're getting a bit too uh, into the gimmicky side now. Yeah, and exactly. Why you had the best gimmick ever with Mega Evolution. Why did you abandon that? Like everybody <laughs> loves Mega Evolutions. Like Z moves, not everybody loves Z moves, including me. I don't love Z moves. I thought it was, I didn't like it. But Mega Evolution, it's awesome. It adds like new marketing to old Pokemon. You can sell more cards. Why? I don't know. I don't know why they stop using Mega Evolutions for Gigantamaxes and stuff like that. <laughs> Watch me in like six months or three months. I'll be the biggest Gigantamax <laughs> fanboy out there. But exactly. right now it's like, oh my God. <laughs> like it's like they're not making a game. They're making toys and like they're... And it. they said, they had an interview where they, they talked about like the challenges of uh, changing the game, the gameplay and stuff like that. And this stresses me every time because... I think most Pokemon fans, the great majority of us, basically don't want any change with the core gameplay. Like they talked about having uh, real-time battles. Like they said, they thought about that, uh, but they always go back to uh, turn base. And I got scared and like nobody wants real-time battles. Only a small minority of people want real-time battles in Pokemon. And those are people that might not even buy your next game. Don't worry about that. The game, the series still sells like hotcakes. Just give us more. Give us actual online solid 2019 online gameplay and watch. The, the, the games will be fine. I, I'm really stressful with this because... So far, I've had a Pokemon game pretty much every year, and I've had like a game to put a hundred, hundreds of hours into. But the day that this series becomes real time, I will be so mad. You have no idea. It will be basically like when you reacted to Dragon Quest Nine when it was revealed because it was supposed to be real time. I really hope that this never happens. Yeah, and I have that exact fear. Okay, I have that exact fear. Every time a Dragon Quest is announced, every single time, I'm like, when they do the logo trailer, because they don't talk about anything, right? Like, they just, that's how they always end the conference, like, or the event or whatever, is you hear the classic music, you see the years go by, you see the, the other titles, and then they're, you know, and now introducing, and you'll see the logo for Dragon Quest Twelve, right? And then you don't hear about it for, like, months and then they'll they'll do the debut trailer where it's usually just like the cinematic intro trailer and then usually around there you'll get your first snippets of like exploration and stuff but they don't actually show you the gameplay like uh, the battle system until after that and that's why like i i really am nervous that the more successful dragon quest gets in north america the more worried I get because I don't want a real time system. If I wanted that, I have Dragon Quest Heroes, you know, like I, I don't want that. I want it to remain a text based, turn based game. So I, yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. I, I always get so scared of that. And you know, it's funny because in the Dragon Quest video uh, for nine, I didn't talk about real time. I focused more on the um, on the transition to weaker hardware and saying like uh, that was like the, the initial thing because of the trailer. Uh, I didn't even think about it. But the first thing that we all saw was the picture with no commands where it was the, basically like the generic hero like slashing down on an enemy and that was the very first thing we saw where you saw like a five you know like hit point just appear but you didn't see any menus you didn't see anything and it was more the graphics where i was just like oh my god like how why are we going like backwards instead of forwards and but that would be a good comment to leave you know because you're absolutely right like at that point in time it was indeed supposed to be real time and i can't even imagine what that would have been like so 
Whatever. Okay, so looking at the time, I guarantee you, you did not find a blast from the past, did you? I was going to name one, yeah, but I, it's going to be a lame one. <laughs> What's the lame one? It's going to be Mario Maker 1. <laughs> oh, God. That's the <laughs> Which is like worst. a three-year-old game. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 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 Okay. Uh, is that is that official? Is that your final answer? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Mario, why not? Mario Maker, Maker One, man. It's it makes Wii sense U. with the team of this because we've spoken about Mario Maker Two a lot, and this is what started it, obviously. And it was something Mario Maker taught me that was very surprising, that I think it still has the potential to teach you if you ever tried the damn game. Is that I actually like making levels, and yeah, later, it's good. later I would do the same with RPG Maker Fest, and some like I always thought when Mario Maker was announced that that game wasn't for me, that I was gonna play it, enjoy it for a while, and then stop because I don't like creating level. I'm not an artist. I have no imagination. I have no sense of creativity whatsoever, and that's true. But for some reason, making Mario Maker levels as fun or as lame as they are is a blast to do so. And that's what I did. If you play my Mario Maker levels, I can guarantee you that they are not phenomenal. They are not masterpieces, but they are mine, and I had a blast making them, and I never thought I would. So Mario Maker 1 surprised the heck out of me for that. And I believe it launched a huge successful franchise. I think it sold like 4 or 5 million copies, on a, which means one, uh, one out of 4 people had it for the Wii U. So it was very, very successful, and I think Mario Maker 2 will sell tens and tens of millions of copies and will probably guarantee that we'll see Mario Maker 3 and Mario Maker 4 uh, down the down the line like this will be a huge franchise for Nintendo uh, the likes of Super Smash Brothers and Pokemon and I have no doubt I have no doubt and I also have no doubt that you're gonna see Zelda Maker before too long I really do I think if Link's Awakening uh, you know, garners a lot of positive uh, press over that little, like, uh, new feature. I think you're going to see the same thing. So congratulations, because that is the very newest game ever added to our Blast from the Past. <laughs> Thank so, you. Thank you. I feel honored. Yeah, yeah, you should. So with that, we're going to wrap this up. Steven's going to go, and he's got a surprise uh, video for you guys. I can't wait till uh, you see it, and hopefully you will have seen it before you see this video. And uh, that's that. So thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and have a glorious couple of weeks. Take care, everyone.